Hi everybody, welcome back to our Facebook Live. Although today we're taping it and we're gonna show it to you at six o'clock. We heard from so many of you that since the president moved his briefings to 4.30 that we should move ours so you should watch both. So that's what we're doing. Tonight we'll be back at 6 p.m. for you. Today I'm joined by our POA, that's Police Officers Association, President Manny Ramirez. Manny, welcome. Thank you, Beth. And by our Firefighters 440 Union, President Michael Glenn. Michael, welcome. Thank you. You're going to hear a little bit more from them in a minute, but as we always do, I want to give you some of the numbers after this weekend and some of the updates on where we are. Today, Tarrant County has 452 COVID cases, 13 deaths, and 41 officially recovered. Fort Worth has 167 cases, 5 deaths, and 12 recovered cases. Per CDC guidelines, Fort Worth and Tarrant County have hit what's called substantial community spread. That means that we're getting this from unknown sources that it's spread in the community. And reporting these numbers never gets any easier. It just astounds me at the rate that they're growing. But it does underscore how important it is that you follow the recommendations set forward not just by us to stay home, but by CDC to wash your hands, cover your sneezes, keep yourself at a good social distance from others. So I'm gonna hand it over first to Manny. Manny, we've worked together on several issues, but I have to say this has gotta be one of the strangest ones. And, la and last week, the governor authorized a special election for our CCPD, which is Citizens Crime Control Prevention. It was originally scheduled for May 2nd, and we said with all the shelter in place and we don't know whether it'll be lifted, it wouldn't be wise to have thousands of voters out to vote. It would go against social distancing and everything. So we were fortunate that he moved it to July the 14th for us. You want to talk a little bit about why that CCPD is so important and what it means for our officers and for you all? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the governor um, for, for moving the election for us. Um, I know you early on, you, you, you discussed how, how worried you were about having an election in May. Um, and so, so I'm very thankful that the governor was able to do that for us. Um, CCPD, not only is it vital for the infrastructure of our police department, um, the funds that we use uh, from CCPD go towards equipment, training, um, a lot of community programs that actually help keep our city safe. Um, so that election is very important. Uh, it's usually up for five years. This year it'll be a 10-year election. Um, and, and it's absolutely crucial uh, for us to be able to provide those services the CCPD allows us to, to keep our city safe. Um, now we're committed um, through, that, through that effort uh, over the next couple of weeks, over the next month, uh, to constantly putting out information about exactly what those CCP dollars are, CCPD dollars are spent on. Um, because we, we need to make sure that uh, every single cent uh, goes towards the goal of, of public safety. Manny, I get so many questions. People want to know how are officers feeling about this and what can they do to help them? What, what can you think of? Can, first, tell us a little bit about how the officers are feeling now as they encounter potentially COVID patients and doing their job. Well, I think right now, uh, Fort Worth police officers, they're out there protecting and serving just as they always are. Um, obviously, they're working tire tirelessly to keep the community safe. Uh, but there are those added concerns and those added stressors and, and, and pressures. Um, we're all in this together as one global community. Uh, our officers are out there working every single day, day in and day out. But when they go home, they're adhering to the same uh, social distance guidelines, the same uh, stay at home orders that, that our citizens are, are adhering to. Um, and so they're trying to set good examples when they're at work uh, and when they're at home. And what can you think of that citizens can do to help besides prayer? You know, I think, I think our citizens can, can follow helps. the guidelines as well. Yeah. Um, I think that that's first and foremost, uh, but like you mentioned, I think prayer is important. Yeah. Uh, making sure that we're praying for our health care providers, making sure that we're praying for all of our first responders, um, you know, all of our city workers, our government workers, uh, praying for our elected officials, praying for their Thank wisdom. You. I know that all of their decisions may not always be perfect, um, but please have faith that their decisions are being made uh, with, with measured, um, measured, measured consequence mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the best intentions. So um, that, that's one of the most important things our citizens can do. 
and I know you all are feeding your officers from local restaurants, which is very important to frequent those restaurants. Absolutely. So early on, we, we recognized that um, not only would, would our, our communities be hit hard by this, but by any type of shutdown, but our business communities would be particularly at risk. Um, and so we, we decided that we were going to uh, start a program where we order hundreds of meals every day um, from local at-risk businesses, and we feed our officers on every single shift. Um, so that the goal is twofold, you know, one, to support make sure that our at-risk businesses uh, are supported because they so often step up to support us they do. in our time of need, uh, but also to make sure that our officers are fed. So um, the program has been very well received. Our officers are happy. Um, you know, in our, in our business community, I'll tell you something, Mayor, uh, just a week ago I had a business owner tell me, he said the Fort Worth POA's order kept me in business for another oh, week. Oh, that's and great. And, and that, that, was, that was heartwarming. So. Um, as long as we can keep the program going, we're gonna. Hopefully we don't have to keep it going for too much longer. I hope not. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great program. Thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Michael, I know y'all are doing the same thing, feeding our firefighters and we fight local businesses all out throughout the city. Yes, ma'am. In fact, we, last week we purchased some meals as well from one of the restaurants that Manny had said was really struggling uh, for the testing facility, the testing group from the UNT Health Science Center uh, down at their location. And we were able to provide meals for those uh, workers that have done the testing for our police officers, our firefighters, and other first responders. And they really appreciated it, it sounded like. That's awesome. And you know, the firefighters are in a unique spot because you do the medical runs Correct. also, which means that our firefighters are encountering a lot of sick people. Really Talk are. a little bit about what your officers, your firefighters are doing and what their response is. And if they do come to the door dressed in hazmat, what should people think? Well, just like Manny was saying a moment ago about the police officers, uh, the Fort Worth firefighters, we're still working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're still answering all the calls for service. Uh, you know, I hate to say it this way, but we're still open for business. I mean, we are still there uh, to serve the citizens, uh, just like our brothers and sisters of the police department are. Um, we, never, we never stop responding. Uh, it is important to know that what we would like for the citizens to do is, if we're coming to their house, if it's possible to meet us at the front door, and to maybe meet us in the front yard, it provides uh, the need for us to use less personal protective equipment. And that personal protective equipment, while we have enough here in Fort Worth right now, uh, there's a nationwide strain. There could be a strain on our system, depending on how long this goes on for. Uh, but I would like to commend um, our city, and especially Fire Chief uh, Jim Davis and his uh, executive staff. They've done a great job of uh, locating personal protective equipment but at the same time also pivoting and trying to find new ways uh, to decontaminate the existing equipment that we have that we never mm -hmm. thought before. We never thought about trying to do it before, uh, but we've really thought outside the box. We've got other departments and other cities wanting to uh, look at what Fort Worth is doing. We're looking at what other cities are doing and trying to learn from each other. Uh, but it's just a completely, I think you referenced a little bit earlier, it's just an unusual time. We it just don't know what indeed. to expect. And there's got to be a healthy amount of fear among the firefighters as they're approaching a home who they're supposed to tell you if they have somebody quarantined, but I know that doesn't always happen. Right, and one of the items or of discussion the other day was what happens when we have someone who uh, wasn't tracked through the Tarrant County Public Health System. They are they're treated and diagnosed in another county, but they come over to stay with friends and family here in Fort Worth, uh, and they're not on our radar. Yeah. So we don't know until they tell us. But um, you asked me a moment ago about uh, how our firefighters are feeling, and while we are still serving, we're still answering the calls, uh, there's no doubt about it that there's a little bit of apprehension yeah, amongst some of our uh, civil servants that are uh, just wondering what they're taking home with their families, what they're exposing themselves to on duty. Um, but again, we're doing everything we can to minimize uh, any chance of uh, communal spread uh, from our agency as well. That's great. And what can would you suggest that people might do to help our firefighters? Follow the guidelines. If they would follow the guidelines, that would be the first and foremost uh, an important thing for us. Uh, social distancing uh, and meeting, meeting us out of the front door. That would be great. That's great. You all need to know these guys and their fellow officers and fellow firefighters really do put it all on the line every day for you. Their service at an unprecedented time, we should all be thankful for. You can't go up and give them a hug anymore, but you can thank them. You can send them a message and you can thank them. And we're grateful for your hard work and for representing our firefighters. And Manny, same for you for representing our police officers. 
So before we go, I want to remind you that tomorrow Fort Worth has a council meeting. It'll be a virtual council meeting once again. It's at 2 p.m., but you can turn, tune in and watch us. You can call in if you do have a question and get in line to ask your questions. We will be amending our stay-at-home order and we'll be talking a little bit about what date that is. It will be April 30th to match the governor's orders. So before we adjourn, Michael, yes, you have something special here in your lap. I, one of our firefighters and his family are fighting. I do. So while we are gathering to talk about COVID, we're talking about this pandemic and how it affects us. Um, the Fort Worth firefighters, just in our way to try to maintain some sense of normalcy, um, we already had this campaign planned. And so one of our firefighters, Jason Loveland, uh, designed this shirt, designed this shirt. Whoops designed this shirt, we are gonna be wearing these, we already are, for the entire month of May, or uh, month of April. Our firefighters pay for them on their own. Uh, they're getting, they're allowed to wear them on duty. And so it's these shirts that you'll see your four firefighters in, supporting autism awareness. And again, it's just our way of just trying to keep doing something that pro provides some sense of normalcy. It was already on our schedule, it was already on our radar, so we went ahead and went on with the plan. I so, think that's yeah. great. It's great. Everybody has somebody that's been impacted by autism. Yes, ma'am. And for the fire department to recognize that and support it. Police does that in so many areas. These guys really, really are doing so much more. So I'll end just like I always do. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay healthy. And y'all stay home.